That was too much, right? That was probably too much. So this is like an add-on from my Skillshare class where we sculpt Raphael. So if you want to sculpt this Raphael, this is an advanced Nomad Sculpt sculpting class. It's over on Skillshare where I'm a top teacher. So this is going to be bringing Raphael from Nomad Sculpt. We're going to get him all set up and ready so we can export him to Blender on my MacBook Pro. Yeah, MacBook Pro M1. I'll show you how, to set, how I set up my lights, my materials, how I render him, all that good stuff. So let's hop into Nomad. We'll get him all set up and ready to go so we can export him to Blender and then we'll hop on the computer. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that there's no layers. So sometimes I use layers, for example, for the skin. Anywhere it makes contact with something else, like here, I add a darker color. You can kind of see it here a little bit. Uh, that just, it's kind of like a, a manual ambient occlusion. So I'll just show you a really quick example of that. So if I took this color, and then I made it darker. And usually I would take a layer. So then I just paint in the crevice with a darker color. And it's like a manual ambient occlusion, like so. And then just take smooth. You can turn the intensity all the way down. You can also clone the smooth tool, which I have down here. And then I just permanently, so I can use this, I call it smoothie. So then you can smooth out the darker color and it gives the illusion of more depth. I think it looks great. Now that I've done it for this one, I need to do it for all the other ones, but I don't know if I want to change the color. Uh, we'll see. So here's another little cool trick that I do that I'm going to do. So it's similar to what I just did with the crevices. So I'd use crease with a with a darker color. So I use crease with a darker color here. It's called stroke painting. So that makes a crease with a darker color. But I'm also I have a lighter color here. So all I did was take the color of the shell and then I made it a little bit lighter. And now I'm using crease with invert and it gives kind of a cool effect your shell. You can also do just regular invert and you can also just make some more indentations which even that looks kind of cool. Okay so once your paint and everything is done you want to make sure all the little details are done. Uh, make sure all the everything is connected like these are all one color so they're connected. I think I want to connect the headband and the face mask or the eye mask and the headband. So I have all these layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring these layers down. The headband, I'm gonna bring the layers and then take the headband and the eye mask and we can just join them for now. And that will be headband. Okay, we have the eye whites, which apparently I have a layer. So I'm just gonna join that down. Teeth, join that down. And these are the eyes like the pupils so i'm just going to confirm and these are those are going to be the eyes and then we have the white wraps so again it's just making sure that your paint is good bring all of these down all of these layers okay let's get rid of anything we don't need so we don't need any of these we don't need these lights let's make sure i don't have anything else selected don't need those. We don't need the lights anymore. Uh, the output is the R. So that's the R that I made for his for his belt. And that's easily, I just made that in this website called text2stl. You can go to the site, you can type it in, and then you can export it, and you can export text to 3D. Really easy, really simple. So I'm just gonna double check my layers. Everything looks good, everything looks good. So now we just need to export to GLTF. So we export to GLTF, all, and I usually keep these checked. I don't really know if they really make a difference, but I always keep them checked. And then we just export, airdrop to Drug Free Dave. So I'll send it to my computer. And then once it's on your computer, uh, we can upload it to Blender. Let's jump to the computer now. I need to make some freckles. So I need to make a freckle 
alpha. So I'm gonna use black and then white because this will show up nicely. I think I'm just gonna make them spherical. So I'm gonna go ahead and export it. So I'm gonna share a JPEG. So let's go to the skin. Let's make a new layer, freckles. Let's just do it from the start. So let's take paint, clone it, paint, frex. Okay, so now it's down here. So let's go here. We'll tap this. Let's import our photos, freckles, if it will let me. Okay, so we've imported our freckles. It's probably all the way down at the bottom. So can I close these folders? Okay, so now we have freckles here. So let's first go to the stroke. So let's change from dot to lock radius. So it should spread out. Okay, that makes sense. The color though, let's change the color to, let's take his skin tone and make it a little bit darker. And oh, what else do we need to change? Let's change, the fall off looks pretty good. Let's do a flat fall off. So we'll change this to flat that way. It's, um, so now when you look at it, it's not feathered around the edges, but you have to go to the alpha and make sure you're scaling. It makes sense. I just wanna make sure all the white things are in that red dot. So now you can see none of them are, none of them are cut off. So the only thing you wanna do is probably lower the intensity. You don't need them like too intense. That might be a little bit too light, but that might be the only thing is just I, I lower the intensity. All right, so let's open up Blender. So I'm gonna open my backdrop that I always use. It's called Light Bright. So, so all this is, so all this is is a plane that's bent. So that's gonna be the backdrop. Uh, I have a camera here. So I'm gonna take this camera and turn this one off, so that we're not seeing it in the viewport. Uh, I like to use the animation view. I like to have these two windows. So we're gonna probably, we'll probably change some of these lights. I'm gonna press Z and go to rendered so we can see our scene rendered. It's very, very bright. Um, so that's the scene. Remember you can get that on my Patreon and on I'll put it on Gumroad as well. So, and I'll, you know what? And I'll actually, I'll put it on Skillshare. If you did the Skillshare class, then I'll, I'll I think you can, we can upload assets now to Skillshare to sell so this will be a great one if you do the class you can get it for free but we'll see how we'll see how it goes so now let's open up so let's import GLTF I'm using too many words I'm talking so much I don't know why uh, don't mind the tank top it's really hot so we're gonna import from downloads TMNT blend X this is a slightly different one than the other one Oh, but I already can think of a mistake that I made. Oh, it looks like I didn't make the mistake. Um, one thing when you bring it over, um, before you export it, select everything, and then go to and then go to your gizmo options and bake everything. Uh, you want to make sure that it's baked. Otherwise, sometimes you'll come over and it'll say Nomad Unskew, and it's really annoying to deal with the Nomad Unskew. So just bake everything before you bring it over into Gnome, into uh, Blender. Okay, so here is everything. So let's, wait, what, how did it, I press, oh there, there we go. Once you bring everything in, it's gonna be, everything's gonna be selected. So what I do is just uh, right click, which is a double click, so I'm using a Mac, or a click with two fingers, and then shade everything smooth. So that's the first thing that I always do shade everything smooth okay so now we can we can see him in this view he's quite big so if I look if I press 0 so that's what my camera is seeing right now uh, so and that's way too big so firstly I'm gonna change the camera so I'm gonna go here to the camera options and I'm gonna change it to vert XL Okay, I can I can leave this here actually this is why I use the two I think I want to change it to um, I'm going to go into the camera settings 
These are more like the export settings. This is like the formatting and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to go here to cycles. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to change this to 60. And um, I think everything else is good. This can go. I'm going to change this folder to. Um, let's just add a new folder. Raf X. I have my computer on like a big ice pack, so hopefully the fan doesn't come on. So I'm doing this so that when I, if I want to do the turntable, if I want to export the turntable, it's like pretty much ready for me to do that. Um, you know what? Actually, I probably should do a smaller size. Now that I'm thinking about it, I should do 1480 by 1850. That's probably easier, easier on my system. My computer system, not my system. My system, my system is fine. Okay, so everything is is and now still selected. So I'm gonna hit S, which is like it just resizes everything, and I'm gonna size everything down to what looks like a decent size. I'll wait there, and then I'll bring him down to the floor. I'm gonna press one. So I'll bring him down to the floor. I'm gonna have to go in and make sure that that's a good spot for the floor um, but the other thing that I want to do is rotate him so I'm gonna just take this blue ring and just rotate until he's like I think that's a good view okay so let's go in here a little bit oh you know what I need to change uh, on my format settings or my camera settings I think I have my Oh, I have my viewport samples to 100. Let's change it to 200, just so I can see this a bit better. And let's turn some of these lights off. So I'm gonna go up here to my lights, and I'm gonna turn off top down, glow back, and back wall. Key left is bright, so I'm gonna go to the light options down here. Uh, actually, that's that's oh, that's okay. I'll leave that for now. Okay, so I can see that, firstly, I want to check out, I want to go to my camera, so I'll tap this black tri uh, um, triangle, and I want to see what it looks like with orthographic. Orthographic, I can tell already, looks much better. Okay, so I'm going to zoom the camera, even though he's out of focus, which we'll fix in a second. Let's go ahead and... Uh, go to the camera settings and change from cycles to EV. So that'll just make it easy for me, easier for me to see, and like and like work with. So here's the frame. Here's the frame. So I'll go back down to camera, and I want to zoom in more. And I think I want to bring the camera up like so. That looks good. And now we have to adjust the focus. So I'll go in really close. Okay, f-stop is 1, which is fine. Uh, this is probably, we're pro it'll probably be 6.5, is my guess. Nope. Okay, his eyes look in focus there. I wonder if I can slide these over a little bit. Now the gizmo obviously is down here because everything is like baked, so I don't know if this will work if I slide them over. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that actually looks okay. I actually like that better, but it's a little bit harder when when the eyes are together like that, so it kind of makes it a little difficult. I can right click and set origin or origin, origin to uh, center of mass, so that might make it a little easier. 
if I want to move them over just a smidge so they're looking at me but I think I would have to also rotate it this way a little bit come on just a little bit I want the I don't mind the back one being a little bit smaller. Oh, there we go. Come on. Oh, I feel like it just went back to what it was. It's annoying. Um so let me go to the rotate options here. That might be easier. Item rotation. It looks like it's this one. Okay. So it moves in huge increments. That's not helpful at all. Okay, I can't move it that way. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's not helpful. Man. Okay, so negative 2.8. Looks pretty good. I believe that. I believe it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at cycles. So go back to camera settings and cycles. It looks pretty good. So I think we can. Uh, go back to the camera settings. Let me zoom out here. Just gotta get to that camera. And we can mess with the f stop and just move it up a bit so more is in focus. So maybe like four. Four, uh, four seems pretty good. Maybe even four, maybe even five. The back doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that um, that blurry. Because we want it blurry, but like you also, we've also worked so hard on these details that we don't need it super blurry. Even 10 is probably good. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. Save as. I'm just going to name it Raf X. I can't believe I can hear my computer and I have it on ice. I mean, it's, it's not that loud, but I can still hear it. Okay, so... Save as. Okay, so we're looking good. The next thing I want to do, I think I want to match the lighting I had in the other one. Although I can't quite remember how I had the light. <laughs> but I know I want to do... Let's turn this off and let's turn so there's a little there's two like um so if we click on like his skin there's two of these little world things which is like material this is the world material with the little line through it actually this is different I thought they were the same until I just looked at them uh, there's this which is very similar this is the materials so make sure you have blender kit when you have blender kit I wish I remember how to do all the blender kit stuff, but it should show up right here, right next to uh, your windows, right here of item tool view and blender kit. So once you're in blender kit, if you tap here, then it has models, materials, and then it has all the categories and things like that. So this is what I'm going to use a lot of the materials on for him. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. 
So, oh, what was I going to do? Oh, so let's go to the world first. And just like I do in Nomad, I like to turn, I like to put the color down to um, black uh, when I'm lighting so that I can see exactly what the lights are doing. So, and uh, the only other problem is he's kind of glossy right now. I didn't change the material, but that's okay. So now I have all the lights here. I think we used top down. So we'll turn that on, which looks pretty cool. You know, and he's actually not like in the center of the of the thing. I think I should move him. I should have moved him to begin with, to be honest, but I should probably move him to the center. Because he's a little off center. Okay, so I think I do want to move him to the center. So I'm going to select everything here and right click, snap to. Selection to cursor. Oh, yeah, that messed everything up. Mm, I might just have to do it like, I might just do it manually. So it kind of sucks because I have to re. Let's make sure everything is moving together. And I essentially want to put his center of mass right in the center of this square. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. He looks like he's pretty much in the center. Okay, so that's good. So I did that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to turn on this. Um, let's turn on the key left. Let's turn on back wall. Let's turn on key right too. Now let's turn that off. So I just want to make sure that he's the the focus is right. So I'm going to go back to the camera, back to the camera settings. Oh, actually, I need to turn it to EV first. So we'll go back to EV, back to the camera. We'll zoom in. We'll make sure that his eyes are in focus. I'm going to bring this back down to one and then make sure his eyes are in focus. Okay, I can't, you know what? I can't even really see it. So it's hard to know. Why is this at two? What are we doing? Okay, focus distance. I want the eye to be in focus. The, the pupil. There we go. That's good. So now I'll take the f-stop and now I'll raise it. Zoom out. I can even switch back to cycles so we can actually see so we can actually see it oh why does his eye look out of focus in cycles it does that sometimes is it though like it's hard to tell that definitely looks out of focus i don't actually know why it does that depth of field I don't like having to focus when it's in cycles, but like I have no other choice. And this light is actually so bright. Let's glow. Oh, there we go. Glow TD makes it a little easier to see. I think that looks like it's in focus. Why is this so bright? I'm going to turn this light down. It 
It looks like it's in focus. We can really, we can actually render off of, well, we'll do that, we'll do that a little bit later. I think it's in focus. We're going to assume it's in focus. Okay. So the next thing we need to do, I can tell that the camera is not properly aligned. So let's move this up. And this whole thing actually needs, I feel like it should move back. Or maybe I can bring this forward. So let's um, press tab, tab, sh tab, should go into edit mode. I should be able to grab this edge and extrude it and move it up like this. Okay, that's good. So now we can tab out of that so now the floor is a bit wider it should give me a little more real estate with the camera to be able to move it back down and if I still I still want it down a little bit lower so I'm gonna tilt it and then I'll move it up so he's in the center of the frame I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to turn off top down for now. And this light is like right in his face. So I think this is glow TD. I'm going to move that. Okay, so I know that I had two lights. I had one in front. And then I'm going to hit, I think, Shift D. And then I hit X so I can just kind of move it. And I'm going to move one here. Kind of low. I think I had two lights there. I'm not sure if I had this light, so I'm going to turn it off for now. And I'm going to turn top down back on. I'm going to take this light and raise it up. So it's a little more soft. I want this to be wider. And I think I want to move it up a bit. Okay, that looks starting to look cool. Starting to look cool. This ice like not. Let me turn my ice pack around, I think. Computer gets so hot dealing with these things. It's like it's incredible. You know what? I'll I'll quit Final Cut Pro. This is this video that I'm currently working on. <laughs> so I'll quit Final Cut Pro. Maybe that'll help. I think that's all I can quit. Okay. All right. So the background. You can see that I have ambient occlusion on and we're gonna do that for the skin as well so let's do that really quickly um, also this is right here this window if you want to make a new window like you just have to go to the edge of one of these things and then you open it up you close it by kinda of doing something similar but excuse me I hate the interface with blender I still don't know how to like properly close things and open open thing I know how to open things but closing them is really annoying um, but anyway, so I have one window here. This is like an animation window because I use this when I do the turntable. This is the 
shader editor. So that's what this is. So this is the shader editor. This is the skin essentially. This is the color from Nomad. And this is the principled BSDF. That's just like, I don't know, that's what Blender calls the color. So this is the color, metallic roughness, um, index of refraction, I IOR, alpha. So here's all this stuff, subsurface, emission. Emission is just make something light up. So that's all of that. This is like the material output. These are nodes, welcome to nodes. I hate nodes. The only thing that I know is ambient occlusion. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, and we'll do that for the skin. So first let's just bring the roughness up a bit. So it's not so, uh, so it's a bit more realistic. That's already good. I'm just gonna do a quick save. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna do shift A and add ambient occlusion. So we'll add that little, we'll add it neatly right here. Shift A to add, uh, what is it? Color ramp converter, I believe. I'll nestle that right next to it. Shift A, uh, diffuse BD, BSDF. Oh, my phone has 20% battery. I gotta figure out, figure out a better way to charge this thing. Like, how are you running out of battery? Um, oh well, it has 20%, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. And then Shift A and, uh, what's the last one? Mix Shader. Okay, so Mix Shader, and I'll tuck that in right here as well. Now I'm gonna select all of these and hit Command C just to copy them all. That way, for the other things, I can um, I can also uh, easily it's easily available. How how do these get so brown? Anyway, so okay for the ambient occlusion, and again we're on the skin. So the color goes to the fact, which is factor. So color to factor. The color ramp, the color is going to go to, oop. so we add those two, we put the mix shader, we put it in between here, So and this one automatically goes to the middle one, so color goes to fac, color goes to fac, you see that he turned like black or whatever, it got real strange, so um, usually I switch these two little nodes here. So I take this one, move it up, and then I take the white and move it over, and then it starts looking a lot better. And you can see as I move this, you can see the shadows getting a little bit darker and lighter. So all like the so this is like the ambient light and how it's reacting to uh, the sculpt. So, but it usually doesn't need to be that that dark. Like it needs to be dark, but nothing too crazy. So we'll leave that around there. And what the diffuse does, so there's a diffuse here also. If I bring the diffuse over, it's gonna bring all it's gonna turn all those shadowy parts white because the color is white. So usually what I do is click on it, you can use the eyedropper and grab a color of the skin, and then you can figure out what color you want it. So it's since it's like a living being that is supposed to have like blood in it, then I'll just do I mean, I don't really have to be, I don't have to be that crazy with it. I can just make it a darker color. Sometimes I, sometimes I, did, I can get, I can get a little, a little crazy. So we'll just make it a little bit darker than what it was. So we kind of keep it the same color. So there you go. That's all ambient occlusion in is, but I think it's very, it's very important if you want to make the stuff like realistic like more realistic okay so the other thing I want to do with the skin is change the the roughness is good let's change let's do subsurface so for weight I'm gonna do bring this up to like 0.130 and then we'll bring the scale up a bit Let me see if you can still see the texture though. That's the only thing. 
Maybe I need a little bit less. Because I really want to see that texture. So I'm going to lower this. I want a little bit of ambient occlusion, but I don't want to I don't want to sacrifice the, the texture. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. That's the only things on here that I really need to worry about. The skin, I think it looks good. It doesn't look too, too shiny. I think it looks great. Zoom in a bit here. Okay, so I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. So the teeth... teeth and the eyes, the eye whites. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command J to join them together. Now I have to go to my materials, which is over here, this little thing down here. I'm just going to delete one of them. So now there's only one material for the teeth and the eyes. And what I'm going to do is, um, is that a smart, is that a smart thing to do though? I'm going to undo. Only because I at one point in time I might want to um, I might want to make the eyes like glowing. Let me just not join them. I can never make up my mind. So anyway, with the teeth, I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, Command V. I'm gonna switch these now. Because they always look because they always look bad if they're not switched. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna bring the mix shader over. Whoop. I'm gonna bring the mix shader over. Color to fac. Color to fac. Why did they turn so white? I feel like they turned really, really white. There we go. Okay, so I definitely want some shadows in there with the teeth. Let's see what happens if I move this other one around. Okay, that's good. And I want to change the color to like a nice like bone type color. So I'm going to put the shader here. Oh, and you know what? If I want to change the color of the teeth, I just go to this little box and hit X. Now I have control of the teeth. So I think I just want to make them more of a... More of a natural... Let me make this bigger. I know it's hard to see. But I just want to make it more of a natural to the color. So maybe something like this. We'll make it a little... I don't mind it bright, but I think I want to take a little bit of the saturation out. Okay, so that's a little bit more realistic. And then I want to change the diffuse to something a little more to the, make it a little darker. Make it a little darker. So we'll do something like that. Let's take a look. Looks so good. So now we'll do the headband. Make that rough, more rough. Um, and you don't always have to do super rough. Like if you don't want any of the light to hit, you can turn down the specular. You can turn this down. But I think it's okay, actually. I'll turn it down a little bit. But I also want to do Command V, just because uh, that's the only thing I know and I'm obsessed with it. We'll go ahead and bring the mix shader over. We'll switch these two. I should have switched them before I did the copy and paste. So color to fac. Okay, we're looking at this. Let's take a look. Okay, we'll bring this down. Maybe we'll bring this down too. I don't see much. Down there I see a little bit, so we're going to leave it around there. 
Okay, so then I'm going to plug in this diffuse into the other shader. Sorry, I'm an itchy, itchy face. So I'll take this red. And it actually looks pretty good. I'll make it a little bit more saturated and I'll just make it darker. Okay, I think that's good. I kind of want this to be a little bit darker now. We'll make that a little darker. We'll give them a little save action. Okay, nice. So as far as uh, so that's pretty much how I do most of these uh, most of these shapes. I don't think I need to go through doing all of them, but the Psy, I want to use Blender Kit. So let's take a look at this one in the foreground. I'm going to move this over. Okay, so we'll take a look in the foreground, and actually, let's go to our camera, and let's just turn off depth of field for now. So now we're in the side. Oh, this time I want to connect these these pieces. I know I want those to be together, so I'm going to do Command J, and then I'm going to go to the material and make sure I delete one of them. And I'm going to rename this. Actually, I don't have to rename it because I'm going to change it. So, Blender Kit, Materials. Uh, we can go up here to the search bar or you can use this search bar. I'm going to write in Metal. Or you can go to Metal if you want. Open this little eye. Why do I only see three of them? This is bugging. Oh, maybe because the window is so small. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I can't remember the one I used. Let me try to find the other one I used. I think I like this one. I think that is the winner. But there's a lot of different options, obviously, for the Psy. But I think I like this. Yeah, I like that one. I think that's the one I used. Hit zero. So it looks pretty good, but obviously you can use any of these any of these metals. I just think that looks the most realistic. I don't know if I want one with like a lighter metal. But yeah, I don't know how to make all these things. So Blender Kit has been like a ooh. What if we do this one? That one's good as well. I don't know which one I like better though. We'll stick with the darker one. Yeah, this is this is Roth X. So we're gonna stick with the darker one. Okay, so eye whites. Um, I remember we didn't do that one, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Command V. I'm gonna switch these now. And copy this. Okay, color to fact, color to fact. Okay, we'll bring this in to the shader, and I just want to make this a little bit of a Okay, I think that's good. 
Nice. We did the skin. So now let's do the front piece. Let's go ahead and change the roughness. Oh, that's what I didn't do on the eyes. I wanted to change the roughness. The eyes can be glossy. The pupils, they can be glossy. Do a quick save. Um, everything else looks good. So the front part of the shell, I made it a little more rough. It doesn't need to be glossy, obviously. Um, Command V. Make shader. Color to fac, color to f fac. Okay, it looks nice and brown, so we're just gonna use a brown reddish color for this, I think. Nice brown color for that, and maybe more of a reddish. Maybe a little lighter. That might be kind of fun. Okay, so shell will up the roughness. We'll add the goods. Make shader. sure it looks good. Get some nice shadows in there. Okay, that seems fine, even though I can't really see it. So we'll connect this, and this is just going to be like a brown. Don't know what happened. Okay, so we'll just make this like a darker, darker brown. That should be perfectly fine. These puppies, we're going to do the same thing with. Command V. Why don't I connect this? I should connect this. Yeah, let me save that. Got to work efficiently. Mix shader. I know, I know, I'm, I'm sure like Blender people are like, you're not efficient at all, you're terrible. I'm having fun. It's the only thing I know how to do in Blender, so... I'm enjoying it. Oh good, my phone is still working. It's plugged in too, it's weird. I don't get it. I need to plug it into something a little more juicy. But I don't know what I can plug it into. I can try plugging it into... Ah, we'll just leave it. If it goes off, it goes off. I need a break anyway. If it goes off, I'll finish tomorrow. Okay, let's get to it. So these are way too shiny. So let's make them less shiny. Oh, we did we connect these yet? No, we didn't. So color goes to fac. Okay, we'll make those black. We'll plug the shader in, and then we'll do like a... Do like a red, and we'll just make it really dark. Uh, for these, do we want to do some subsurface? Maybe? Because I think so. Okay, so we put those scale and stuff up a little bit. Seems a good. Okay, the belt. Let's take a look here. He needs a little more light. The belt, I'm inclined to just use a material. So we'll turn this. So we'll just do leather. 
And we have our leather picks. This might be too close to the um, the shell. Oh man, there was like some weird vibration just a moment ago. Very reminiscent of the why is that so why is that leather so glossy? I kinda want like weathered I like really weathered leather. That's what I'm into. This one seems good. Okay, I think that seems pretty good. And let's turn this light up so we can see a little bit better. Let's do soft fall off and let's put this to 200. This is just the light in front. Just so I can kind of see. I still can't see, so I'm gonna put this to 800 for now. Just so I can see it really clearly. God, my viewport is so slow. Yeah, it's not okay. So it's just, it's just slow. I think that's just just gonna be slow. I don't know why you just zoomed out when I was zoomed in. Very unhelpful. Okay. So now these part, these pieces, which are separate. Uh, I used like a, let's go with, um, let's go to our metals, I think. So we'll go to our metals. Let's slide this over. Oh, it's like not moving, moving so slowly. I just want to be able to see some more metal. See, I like this one. That one would be kind of cool too, actually. But I don't think it quite works for what we need. Why? How are these all the metals? Okay, what's going on here? What are we doing? Oh, I still have leather here. There we go. Here's the rest of the metals. Metal. That's all I want is metal. Thank you. There we go. So now we can see the metals. Ooh, what if I did like a yellow? Sometimes I just like to do like different, like something that doesn't make sense. Actually, a lot of times I like to do just random uh, differences that don't make sense. Oxidized copper. We could go with the gold, but the gold is just rusted bronze. Maybe that's Maybe that's more my... Stilo. The rusted bronze. We'll do the R with the rusted bronze as well. That's kind of cool. Right? Okay, if I can get out of this. I think you get like stuck in the camera or something. I don't know what happens, but it's annoying. Okay, so this, um, do I want to put like a fabric around it instead? What if I did a book pattern? 
No, it has to be something red. I think. Ooh, leather red. I'll take that. Good, it's both of them. Good, good. Let's go back to our camera. And our dude is bright. I'm going to turn this light down a little bit. Oh, I thought we... Oh, no, this is the wrong light. This light we can put to 200. Let's do a save. And we just need to get the wraps on the hand and feet. So we take these. Everything looks good. We can change the roughness. I guess they don't have to be really rough at all. Turn down the specular on them even. And then I'm going to go ahead and add, oops, Command V. Oh. Let's throw on the mix shader. Color to fac. There we go. Then we'll plug in the diffuse. I think I want to do like a nice orangey. Of course, darker. How does that look? That looks pretty good. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good. These still look a little shiny to me. So I'm going to turn the specular down. And maybe the roughness up a bit. And the shell as well, I think I might turn the roughness up a little bit on the shell. Um, I think that might be it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, there is. There is also these, which I will just add a different kind of leather, I think. We have the pouch. What if I add that same leather? And then for these, what if I do... Oh, what if I just up the roughness and maybe up the metalness on them? Call it a day. So there's two buckles here as well. We'll do... Ten percent. It's going, it's going fast. I just want to use the same leather. So what 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 is this leather called? Leather J1. So I'm just gonna use leather J1 for Oh wait, is it the same? No. Leather J1. Okay, save. Save, save, save. Okay, let me press zero. Okay, he's looking pretty good. So let's grab all of his parts here. 
going to hit one just so I can see the floor. Also, I did I did the ambient occlusion thing on the floor also. Um, that way, it actually it's giving us these like nice shadows on the floor. So if we tag this, and you can see the ambient occlusion is like a brownish, but the floor is white. I think I want the floor. I think I want the floor to be a little bit more gray. I should probably do it a different color, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, because you can do it different colors. It's the cat. Being doing cat things as usual. I don't know what color though. I mean, Raphael is red. I kind of like that. Maybe I should take some of the saturation out. So yeah, there's always a, I don't know what color I want. I'll take more, maybe I'll just go with the gray. I kind of like the color though. I kind of like a little bit of, a little color. Kind of like it, but I I don't like it against the the other beige parts of his of his colors. I kind of wish it was like a yellow. Let's see if any of these look good. It doesn't look too bad. We'll just go with like a little bit of a warm. A little bit of a warm gray. And a little bit darker maybe. I don't know how dark I want it. Cat is so loud. We'll do... Actually, that's okay. Maybe I want to add... So back wall is lit. If I turn it off, it's a little too dark. Make sure to turn both of these on. I'm going to turn this light down a little bit. Turn it to 140. And maybe I'll make it a little warmer. Now glow back. That's if I want to add like, let's say I make it lighter. And put this at like 100. Can I see it yet? 200. I don't see it on the wall. There we go. So we'll go with 400. Oh, that's a little bit too much. Turn the radius down. And put it back to 200, even though I couldn't see it before, but I can see it now. So this I kind of do when you want that kind of glow effect behind them, like on the wall, and usually it looks pretty cool. I'll put it down to 100. OK. 
Okay. Do I need back wall now? I kind of like it without back wall, so we'll leave glow back on. Uh, and we'll change this. Let me change this color. How am I stuck in the model again? Uh, I'm going to take some of the saturation out of this. Save that. Uh, the toes are still, they look a little bit too high still. So I need to move him down a smidge. That's probably better. Okay, so now for the lights. This is not, oh, this is just glow, glow. Key left, let's turn that off. Top down looks, always look, it looks good. So top down looks good. We need a light in the front to just light him up a little bit better. But I'm going to move that back and up. I'm going to extend the radius so it's a little bit bigger and softer. So this is just to illuminate him a bit. Because otherwise he's just going to be too dark. Okay, and what happened to the other light? So I'm confused, oh, cause it's, maybe because it's not on. So there's another light here. This one I want to make a little bit warmer, like it's a candle or something. So we'll make that light a bit warmer. Soft fall off. We'll put this to 100 and see what it looks like. See, I think that looks pretty cool. I don't know why my uh, my directional pad is a little bit like my air trackpad. Okay, I'm gonna raise the radius. it a little bit higher okay I think that works um, so now I want to add the one of the rim lights wait why is this light all the way oh this is rim back rim there we go rim edge right what we want. So I'm going to lift it a little bit higher and rotate it so it kind of hits more of him. I don't necessarily want it on the floor. I'm going to do soft fall off. I'm going to bring it down to like 800. Uh, the color You'll make it a little bit warmer. I think that looks good. I also wanted to check the lighting of this light. This might look good if it's like a cool, more of a cool color. Since we have a lot of warm colors. 
sometimes that's a nice to like kind of break it up so I'm gonna save this uh, everything so far looks pretty good my framing how's my framing my framing is really good so I think I'd like to do a render of this so I want to make sure that I go back to my camera and turn on depth of field and then we'll just see if he is we'll see how he looks so I'm gonna render this image let me see when you go to your camera when you go down to render there's 350 which is probably kinda of big I'm gonna put it to 125 because otherwise if it's 350 it'll just it'll take so much longer <coughs> So we'll leave it at there for now. I'm going to save it. And I also want to... Um, was that it? This looks a little too... Um, I need to put the f-stop up to like... Eight or nine. That's better. Maybe even ten. I think we want to... Save that. Uh, okay, I think that looks good. I want to see a print of that. The only other thing that I wanted to do was take him, so I'm going to select all of him. And then I'm also going to select with shift this empty, which is you can. Um, an empty is like it'll help you to animate. So the last thing I grabbed was the empty, and now I'm going to right click. And oh no, I don't have to right click. I can just do Command P, Object, Keep Transform. Nothing should change. So now it's connected to the empty. And now I should be able to do the, <clears throat> the turntable. But for now, let's just go ahead and save. And I'm going to do a render. So I'll render the image, and this is going to take a while, I think, because of all of those ambient occlusions that I've been doing, so it needs to calculate all of that. Um, but the good thing is, is it doesn't have to do it in parts, so that's, I guess that's nice. I still can't quite tell if it's in focus but it looks like it's in focus so I think it looks pretty good so yeah I'll show you the I'll show you the render when it renders all right so here are the final renders I like to play around with the color with the lighting also the temperature of the lighting so I just did a bunch of renders I always do a bunch of renders just to see which one I like best and I actually did some perspective ones coming up as well the backgrounds are mid-journey uh, I like to blend the 3d stuff with backdrops change the lighting make it all work it's always a good time all right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. In a world beneath the streets, a legend among legends is reborn. What's up guys, welcome to my advanced 3D sculpting class with Nomad Sculpt. I'm Drug Free Dave, a 3D artist and content creator living in Brooklyn, New York, and this project is near and dear to my heart. You have to create art and sculpt things that you love, that you're passionate about, that you're nostalgic about, and this one is all of that for me. We're gonna sculpt Raphael, the bad boy of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They were the first characters that really made me fall in love with drawing and art and creating. They just had a huge impact on me when I was a kid. So being able to pay tribute and recreate them in 3D and sculpt them in 3D is so much fun on so many levels. I'll be sculpting on my iPad Pro 2022, but Nomad Sculpt also works on Android tablets. I love creating cute characters, creepy characters, simple characters, and also complex characters like this one. I also love creating sculpts for resin 3D printing. This advanced class will cover all of the tedious details that go into making a complex character like a Ninja Turtle. This is what you'll learn in class.
basic head-to-toe blocking, stylized anatomy and using hierarchy for posing, voxel remeshing and quad remesher and or decimation to help keep our sculpt as efficient as possible without sacrificing quality. We'll add tons of detail, skin texture, accessories, coloring, lighting, turntable, and of course, final rendering. You'll want to be familiar with Nomad Sculpt for this one. And just fair warning, it is a long class. So make sure you have plenty of snacks, full battery, maybe watch the original 1990 movie just to get you in the mood. As always, keep drawing, keep sculpting, and I look forward to seeing you on Skillshare.